This is Diane Snyder from TV Guide Magazine and TV Insider, and I'm here with Mark McKinney and Scott Thompson of the Kids in the Hall. Do you know what Amazon wants from Kids in the Hall? Y yes, Don, a, a funny show, but one that is free of targets. <gasps> Topical topics. It's all a government conspiracy. Alarming edginess or unsettling settings. I now declare the last glory hill open for business. Hello. Now, hello. hello. Now, you guys are back with eight new episodes of your sketch comedy series. And I was happy to see that you're as fearless and shameless as ever. Yes. Why did it take more than 25 years to get a sixth season of The Kids in the Hall? Mark, can you take that question? Sure. Um, well, it, it felt like we'd done it, done it. And then um, gradually as we toured, we did we were doing these tours and we'd done a couple of other sort of television projects that weren't a sketch series. Um, but we wound up with a, with a whole bunch of really good material, brand new material in the bank. And we were kind of going, God, this, this would be fun to put this up. And, and then, Suddenly, there was a door to walk through through with Amazon Canada to to get get this stuff uh, out there, and so we wrote a, a bunch of new stuff and, and took the stuff from the road, and and here we are. Yeah, because as we we were all we would always tour every three or four years, and then ten years ago we did Death Comes to Town, but we never really thought that we could possibly do sketch comedy again because we thought, oh, how could we improve? We can't really touch what we've done. But as Mark said. We just kept writing new new sketches as we toured, and the more each tour had more and more new material. And then, it, for me, I was haunted by the idea that it wouldn't be put down permanently. And mm -hmm. and then we pursued it, and and they pursued it. Like Dave Foley was the one that really got this happening, and it took about three years of uh, you know people pursuing things. As well, we all had different lives, you know that, that we had to make sure everything came together at the right time, and this all came together. It was a perfect storm. And it's so wonderful that you guys are still around, still healthy, still speaking to each other. What is unique about your creative partnership that you don't find when you work with other people? Uh, let me ask Scott that question. Well, I mean, chemistry would be the, the lazy answer. But I, I think what we're talking about is, is we love each other as, as comedians and artists, but also as friends. And we're sort of like um, brothers in a way. And so we know that we can't really ever separate. Uh, we made a pact many years ago that we would leave in a coffin. And uh, that's the what? way. What? You don't remember making that pact? <laughs> what, you don't want to be buried in a coffin? Oh, what I meant was, uh, Mark said, uh, we'll leave in an urn. Was that it? Yeah. And, her, and then I decide now I will only leave in a Viking funeral. That's the thing. That's what I want. <laughs> no one makes me laugh more than the other four. There's lots of people that are as funny, but they can't go. Most people just don't go as far. Like <laughs> we will say things to each other that are borderline. Well, I wouldn't even say borderline criminal. You know what I mean? Just like, <laughs> oh, my God, in polite society, you can't get away with that. But we won't judge each other. We just, what is funny is funny. And all we ever try to do is make each other laugh. It's great to see so many of your familiar characters on this, this new series, Buddy Cole, the head crusher, poor little Gavin. Does it, was it creatively liberating to be able to do this series for a streaming service and not have to worry about the censorship issues that maybe you guys faced in the past? Well, I mean, there's always kind of like back and forth about what you can put on, uh, that to, to say the least. But um, no, I, I, it was liberating to like bring, I don't know, just the, just the new kinds of ideas that we have. There were there there are tons of new characters. There was tons of like Scott mentioned, tons of stuff from the tour that we got to reinterpret, um, you know, for for television. So it it, it felt pretty creatively free once we started i will say that like once we started shooting everybody snapped into a good mood i would say another in addition to the new series there's also a two-part documentary kids in the hall comedy punks premiering on amazon on may 20th what did you guys think when you saw that footage of yourselves back from your pre-tv days it was incredibly moving, or as moving as I'm allowed to be as wasp. 
Um, <laughs> Uh, and I thought it was extraordinarily well done. I was a little nervous because we had friends and family involved. My brother's the executive producer who sort of, you know, muscled this along with Paul Myers. And, uh, and, and you know, there's a lot of good documentaries out there, but uh, there's a ton of them now and not all of them kind of have. And this, this was so well done. I'm, I'm really proud of my, uh, the people involved, my bro in particular. Are you guys planning to go out on tour anytime soon? I, I, I hope so. I really, really want to. Mark and Scott, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. And Kids in the Hall, season six, premieres on Amazon Prime Video May 13th. And the documentary Kids in the Hall Comedy Punks, May 20th.